Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today I have the new Whispering Willows Transfer by IOD. And I am going to use it for four different scenes on a piece of furniture. If you're new to my channel, I do many crafts, furniture flips, dump hauls, and trash to treasures. This is the piece of furniture that was given to my husband by a co-worker. And it would be great in the grandbaby's nursery which is here for the summer, and then they can take it with them when they move. I had to start with some wood filler because it looked like a dog bit it or heaven knows what after I gave it a good cleaning. I just filled some of the holes and then wiped that back. I did make a custom color with some latex paint. I had some creamy um, yellowish uh, mustardy yellow almost and I mixed it with a white to come up with just a really pretty pale cream color. Uh, first I did give it a coat of um, a latex primer that I had in the house and after the primer dried it did take two full coats um, of the latex paint and then in some places it took a third coat uh, to cover over that horrible reddish uh, wood color that was there but there was no bleed through so it must have been a shellac or something on the top i just put the original knobs back um even though they would have been very cute in a sage green or something, I decided that I would keep them that color because the interior of the little cabinet is uh, still in that cherry wood and I didn't uh, want to do the interior of the piece. So that is why I left the knobs that color. Now this Willow's uh, Whispering Willow transfer from IOD is absolutely adorable eight pages of whimsy. It is so sweet and I knew the minute that I had seen it that I wanted to do something with it for the nursery and it has mushrooms, it has florals, it has the sweetest little woodland animals, it has um, berries, just a myriad of different things that are just absolutely adorable. The hardest part about this transfer was trying to lay out a pattern they were all so cute. I would lay something out, then I would take it down, then I would put up something else, and around and around and around. I had so many ideas. I wish that I had done the front of the piece first. I tried to, and I just was having some difficulties, so I ended up going to the side. Now, had I done the front first, I would have done less here on this side, but live and learn. I can always take it off if I want to sand one off or something and, you know, fix that up. But for now, it is very, very sweet. So what I recommend is you cut out the pieces, you get a piece of painting tape, and you just lay the pieces here and there and here and there until you're happy. And then just using the tool provided, just slide the piece of paper away, lay it down on the clean surface. Of course, this does need to be good and uh, cured. So I would say recommend at least three to five days. I know it says seven days on the paint. So if it's humid in your area, you might have to wait a full week. But generally speaking, especially with latex paint, I find three days sufficient. Um, and then you just go ahead and transfer. Now, on this first section here, I am doing this real time. I did not speed this up for this section because I wanted you to see exactly how long it takes me to do these four or five pieces on this side. And then the rest of the dresser, I am going to speed up and cut out some pieces and parts. You do not have to see every single um, swipe of this tool. But see how I catch like a little bit of an air bubble once I get it started? Um, I find personally for me that is the way that works best. Um, and then if there's any bits and pieces left on the piece, you can see it when you go to lift it up. You'll just have to go back like a little tiny piece of leaf um, here and there. You know, you'll have to just add that. And especially when you are doing an overlay, one transfer on top of another, you want to be very careful of that area. Then I took this little plastic that came with it, burnished that down. You can use your hand, you can use a cloth, you can wait till you're all done and do the whole piece, which might even be easier. And then I moved on to the other piece. So again, this is real time. So I would say that took probably less than two minutes per section. Now I'm going to tell you, I have done this before when I did not wait for the piece to cure and it probably took 15 or 20 minutes and 
sometimes it lifted my paint. So it is really recommended that you await. Now, if you're going over a chalk paint, you will have to finish the piece with a polyurethane before you um, add the transfer. And then when you're completely finished with the whole entire piece of furniture and everything is burnished down, you will either have to wax or poly over the piece to protect it um, so that it doesn't lift up in the future. And in this case, I am going to use a, um, a wax from, I believe, uh, Varathane at the end. Now I did the bird and I just think that this just so beautiful. It's um, just, I don't know the artist of this particular or if it's several artists that the IOD sisters work with. Uh, IOD is for Iron Orchid Design and um, you can go directly onto their YouTube page or their website. I'm sure they're probably on Instagram um, and you can see a number of different transfers, but I tend to purchase mine on Etsy. There are other, um, the, the closest retail to me is about an hour away and uh, that's a little bit far so unless I'm going to that area which I rarely do um, then I have a tendency to purchase mine online and the name of the seller on Etsy that I find and I have used a number of times now um, has the best prices or free shipping or you know just well packaged what have you is the purple painted lady so if you just type that in on Etsy, you'll be able to find um, which one she has available. And that's how I received it. And I would say it took two or three days to get it in, um, well packaged in a bubble wrap uh, with the please do not bend sign on it. And I have not had any issues purchasing the transfers from them. Now, I will also tell you that I have used transfers from other companies, Prima by Redesign and a few others that are more like tissue paper. And I like them, but I feel like the quality of the paint is better with the IOD. I find that the other one maybe chips a little bit more. Now here, I want to put this little badger on, but he looks like he's floating in midair. And I didn't have any grass, so what I did was I took three of the little leaf sec. They were just leaves here and there, and I cut the leaves off of one another. And I just put them sideways and overlapped them one on top of the other to make it look like a patch of path or, or grass uh, on the ground so that the little badger would not look like he was floating because I did want to put the wood stump with the mushrooms further down the path. Um, not being an artist, I do not know how to do that 3D, but if I had the ability, I would have probably painted in a way sort of added the line that I was looking for to give that more of a of a path just on this side of the dresser. And then once I am done here in real time with this dresser, I'm going to move along now and then I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to do the rest of the dresser and show you the different scenes that I came up with by cutting pieces and parts of the transfer. You do not have to use the entire transfer the way that it comes. You can um, do whatever you want with it and I recommend that you do and I'll show you a few places where I did something different. So here on this side, I finished the stump and then decided to add a couple of the cute little mushrooms to the um, edges of that just to make it a little bit more realistic. And I think that that came out so sweet. So this side is my scene number one. And so what I am going to do on the other scenes is uh, quickly add them. And then when you see them finished, you'll You'll see the entire scene, but I will point out as I do something unusual in case somebody would like to reproduce the scene that I used um, since I did um, a couple of things that were out of the norm with the transfers. And so here it is finished on number one. And the only thing different on scene number one is the leaves that I used both under the badger and under the stump. And uh, that was all that was different. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the front. 
I love the front of this piece and I had so many choices that I had a difficult time. But I started by cutting some of these pinkish colored floral petals. And um, so this very first one is um, my own um, creative juices flowing here, trying to make this look a little bit different than it did on the transfer. So the one uh, in the center I added and then I overlaid the two and then I moved the flower around and around and around until I got it um, you know, where I wanted it so that it looked like it was connected. And you do want to layer this properly because had I put the other one on top, you'd see the stem. And so that's why laying it out is a good idea so that you can figure out what order you need to transfer these on. And then um, I just love the pinks and grays together. And um, I found this bird and I just thought, oh, this just goes so well with it. If it'll fit and not look weird, I want to put it here in this corner. So I got it so that the beak was exactly on the edge of the drawer. And then, of course, he's overlaying the top of the flower just a little. So it takes a little bit more to press down on that to get him where I wanted him. But I loved the combination of the colors that were in the bird as well as those florals. So those are three separate pieces that I put together to create that look. And then moving down this door, I am calling this right section of the front my scene number two. To marry the drawer and the front cabinet door together, I did find another piece of floral in that color and I added the little stem in the midway between the two to make it look like um, it is coming off the door onto the cabinet door and I just added those um, florals uh, two of them just layering them on top of each other to create my own idea of how this flower would look like a bit of a vine coming down and then once i am finished with that i want to move on to the bottom of this because i just wanted to put two little transfer items here and that is the um, little stump with the mushrooms on it because it has the gray in it that I think goes so well with that pink and that pink um, floral has quite a bit of gray in it and then I wanted to add this sweet little bunny and overlap that just a little bit so he looks like he's right in front and so he fits properly on the door now depending on the size of your piece of furniture or item that you're working on that will sometimes dictate either the piece of transfer or how you have to cut the transfer to fit fit. So here is scene number two and I love it. Now the left side of the front I'm calling scene number three. I had to move around a few times because when I first laid it out um, I really didn't love the way that it was looking so I wanted to cut away. Um, you don't see it here but where the knob is I cut away one of the magnolia looking flowers um, so that this would fit a little bit better, a little bit tighter um, to the bottom of the dresser rather to the outside edge of the knob because as I began to lay things out, I realized that it was looking a little busy um, and I wanted to, um, you know, just kind of play with that a little bit to make that a little less floral in some places and a little more floral in others. So I joined these two together and you could see where the two greens meet. And I had the idea that I could use one of the lone flowers um, that came with it. Uh, to cover that up but right here I am taking the next section which did come connected but it's easier to work sometimes with these as you separate them especially when you have a drawer or a cabinet or something where you are going to have to you know maneuver this over and around the piece so the next section is actually raspberries and blackberries and it's so sweet but here I have to get over the top of the drawer and onto the curve of the drawer which I have to say um, is very easy to do with IOD as I said before which I have not had as much ease with some of the other ones that I've used they have a tendency to crack um, more and I just took the 
you know, if you need to separate it, you can use an exacto knife here. I use the scissors um, just where the drawer is so that you can open the drawer without ruining that. And then when I finished the same um, berries on the right hand side, then I would burnish both of those and then move on to the rest of this drawer. Originally, I thought that I wanted this little hedgehog in the strawberry patch, but he is just so cute and he goes so well, again, with the grays and the pinks that I decided instead of putting him on the left side of the dresser to put him right in the middle here. And so um, he is just adorable. And then I just took a set of three... Um, raspberries that were separate and I put them down at the bottom near him as if he is eating them. Then I step back and take a look and decide here that I do want that flower on top of the two green pieces to pull that together and that was a single flower by itself so I could use that on a whole nother you know project later on and I saved many projects for that um, but I decided I wanted it right there to just pull that together and then I took the piece that I had cut off and I went around the knob with half of it on each side and the pieces of the little gray trumpet flowers I had just uh, taken them off the berries and used them my way um, just to make that look a little bit almost like a heart shape when you look at the front and then I moved on to scene number four on the other side and played with this and played with this and played with this because I felt like the strawberry leaf was just too big so I went ahead and I cut half of the leaf off to get the scale better for what I was looking for. And I used um, that at the bottom and then the whole piece over on top of that, making that connect um, so that it could look like um, it was one piece. And then again, you just step back saying, what's it missing? Oh, well, here's a little leaf I can add to the top. And here's a little, you know, thing I can add over the bottom. And I deliberately left the stem not touching the base because I knew I wanted to add some, um, mushrooms and I wanted to be able to get a little bunny rabbit in and under that as well so you know that's why laying that out certainly helps so I just continued on here adding a bunny and I am out of screen when I go ahead and add the um, mushrooms but you will see that in a minute finished and then I went ahead added a little leaf to the top and then that hummingbird where you see it and that finished scene number four. So here it is completely finished and it is hard for me to show you this particular side in the nursery. So I'm gonna show you this one here in the living room. And then after I wax the entire piece, I am going to move it into the nursery and show you the rest. I really like the way this sealing wax goes on by Valspar. I just used a wax brush. It is very uh, creamy and almost liquidy so that it isn't, um, it isn't hard at all to make that go on. I just went ahead and wiped it well with the brush. Once that was completely on each side, about two minutes. I don't wait terribly long. I know some people wait a long time, but I tend to wait about two minutes and then I just take a rag and wipe that and I did the entire piece of furniture just like that once that is cured which is a few days before you want to put anything on top of it and probably a good month before you want to wash that um, if you have to wash the piece that you are working with now for the reveal like I said it's hard to get this side but this is the scene number four and I love the colors together and here is number three, looks almost like a heart. Here is scene number two with the drawer and then a better look at the entire piece in the nursery. And then I'll shut the door so you can see scene number one as well as a better look on the front. So I just love, love, love the way that this front came out. Now, if I did this again, I would only have done the front, but I really wanted to, um, to just kind of use this transfer and show you several different ways, several dif different scenes um, that you could do. And I would love a comment. Let me know what you think of this and please share it. I could really use a boost in subscribers if you're willing. I would appreciate that. And thank you for stopping by. I will see you in the next one. Take care.